Good evening, good morning, good day, wherever you are in the world, and thank you so much for joining yet another Home in Italy live stream, live on Facebook and live on YouTube. Really, really good to be with you guys uh, yet again. Hopefully, all the sound and everything is all working. Uh, everything, a few things flashing in my uh, in my face as usual, but hopefully. Uh, everybody can hear me okay so yeah if you let us know you should see a chat box um, and if you start chatting away and let us know that uh, that you're actually that you're actually with us that would be fantastic because up to now I'm not seeing anything what's oh yeah people are coming through so hi Lillian first person first person here that's fantastic okay so as I said thank you so much for joining us once again my name is uh, uh, David Benton and together with my wife for the last 15 years we've helped people buy uh restore and relocate out here to beautiful italy so hopefully if you keep following us every thursday which that's the that's the thing you need to be doing you need to be here every single thursday uh, and follow us on these things just to find out what it's all about all about but the buying process all about what it's like when you restore here what it's like when you're living here and all the rest of it that's what we're here to do to give you the confidence to move on and and to, to, to make the step to take the step so uh, I've seen a few people that's, that's that's coming through, which is great. So if you let us know where you are in the world, uh, let's make sure that that chat box is working. Normally, I can see how many people are in, but for some strange reason, I can't see anything. So I have no idea how many people are uh, in tonight. But uh, anyway, who doesn't really matter, does it? It doesn't even matter if there's one, but I'm sure there's a good amount of you. So I say thank you so, so much for joining us. Um, I need to tell you for the next, next few weeks what's coming in. So uh, on the next subject, should I say, uh, let me just bring these up next week. So the 9th of February, it's the big, massive Q&A. Who comes up with these now? I don't, well, I've got Tony helping again that, that's doing uh, doing the, the, the moderating in the background. And, and, and I asked him to come up with next week's title. And that's the, the big, massive Q&A. So basically what that is, is a big, massive Q&A. It's a question, question and answer part, which should be interesting because with this new system, I've no idea where the questions come flying in from and Tony sends them in and takes them off and all the rest of it. So that should be a bit of a laugh. But basically what you can do next week, next Thursday, at the same time, is join us and ask anything you like about buying, restoring, or living here in Italy. Try and catch me out if you can. Obviously, if I don't know the answer to it, I won't bring the question up, but there you go. I'll try and I'll try and do as many as I can. Uh, and then on the 16th of February, this is going to be a great one. The 16th of February is meet the home buyers. We do this quite often with people that's maybe just bought or something like that. But we're actually meeting people that have been here now a year. If you used to follow our old webinar um, system, then uh, you would have probably remembered Lexi and Craig. They moved out here from the US, got their, got their visas sorted out and all the rest of it. Um, came on a property tour with me, found an amazing property, moved out here, uh, sorted out their visas, sorted out their residency. Um, Craig's also had to, to reset his driving test. Uh, so that's going to be great. They're going to come in and let us know what life is like one year on. So remember, that's the 16th of February. Again, always on a Thursday and always at the same time. Then we have on the 23rd of February, one of my favorite ones, Maya Abruzzo. Um, obviously, our services are home in Italy. We can help people all over Italy. But I personally, I, I love Abruzzo. Obviously, we chose to be here and this is where we're based. Uh, so I like to tell people about it and show it off a little bit. So that, that's a great one. That's on the 23rd of February. And the other thing to let people know is a home in Italy on the road. That's the 4th and 5th of May. Now, we did this last October and it was absolutely fantastic. I've done these a, a number of times before COVID sort of uh, took over and the, and the rest of it. But these are basically the idea is that, that we get a group together, usually up to around 20 people get a group together and uh, we organize the two days, which is the 4th and 5th of May. Everybody stays in accommodation uh, in, in Pescara, uh, which is obviously the, the right in the center of, uh, in, uh, of Abruzzo on the coast. Um, we'll give you some tips on accommodation and that kind of thing and hotels. But we'll come and collect you. We'll come and see you actually on the 3rd and we have an aperitivo together uh, and, and a little bit of food and things. Have a good chat about what's going to happen over the, over the following days. Uh, then on the Thursday, we will collect you uh, by our minibus, take you to lots of different areas, we view houses, we do a little bit of wine tasting, uh, your meals are included, all your travels included, uh, and then we do the same again on the Friday. They really are excellent ways of getting to know not just the area, but we take we have a look at all sorts of different properties while we're out and about in the area. You get to meet, obviously, other professionals that's here as well. Sometimes we, we get to meet the notaries and things like that. Um, 
all eating together, getting to know other people uh, that think, probably thinking the same thing as what you are. It's just a great, great way of, uh, of, 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 of meeting people uh, that's, that's thinking about buying a property in Italy as well. So if you are interested in that, because we have already put this out to a few people that were, should have come out last October, um, if you are interested in that, then please let us know uh, on our email at info at a home in Italy dot com, uh, because there are limited spaces. And I, I think we only have round about I think it's about 12 or 13 spaces left on that. So if it's something of interest, I will be doing more publicity on it. Obviously, I will give you a lot more information and that kind of thing. Um, but if you are interested, send me an email. Uh, and obviously, we can look to block your space and the rest of it. it the price is 295 euros per person, uh, and that includes uh, your travel while you're while you're here from Pescara. We take you around in the minibus. Includes food. It includes things like wine tasting and all the rest of it. Um, they, they used it a fantastic, fantastic uh, tour. And like I said, the, the last one was absolutely superb. So uh, hopefully, you will join us on that. Okay. So tonight's subject, we are talking about the legal. Legal documents and searches. So that's what we're going to be talking about tonight. And I'm going to give you a little bit of an insight before we kick off of, uh, of why this one is uh, is important to me. Okay, so I should have had music on Tony. I said to Tony, we always have introductory music while I'm waffling on like this. And, and I've, every time now, this is, I think we've done these new streams four times and I keep forgetting to put the music on. So, uh, so Tony, ignore when I said, when I switched the music off, turn all these little bits off because I'm, I'm doing it all wrong but who cares anyway so anyway let's get uh, let's get started i've no need to turn the music off so we're talking about legal documents and searches so there's going to be quite a few um slides tonight so a lot of it i'm going to be sort of working on when i suddenly go small into the corner of the screen and we start talking about things like this why is this important to me and why should it be important to you one of the things what I have noticed recently, well, I'm saying recent, I've noticed it all the time. Whenever you, anybody puts posts on social media, um, when I've been putting videos on, on uh, YouTube, which thank you very much for your support because the, the videos are going absolutely incredibly well. So thank you for that. Um, obviously, people like to put their, their comments in, which is fine. That, that's what it's all about. It's all about people having their idea of, of, of you know, how the system works here in Italy. Now, as well as a lot of the, the rubbish on there where people like to pull down my Yorkshire accent and things like that, which I don't care about, um, so people can keep writing those things if I actually enjoy it. Um, but the things that annoy me more than anything is when people come on there and they will write something like, great house, good luck, look, good looking buying in Italy, it's a nightmare. You must have all seen it, and probably lots of you actually think that way, and to be honest with you, that should be the last thing that you think, because it's just simply not true. I don't know why we have a habit of, of pulling, I'm going to say other countries down, other country systems. We think ours is the best, and we think everybody else is, it can't be anything to do with ours. So it's just so easy to say, absolute nightmare, uh, full of bureaucracy, full of this, there's, there's, uh, I've heard that people buy houses there and it gets taken off them a month later because Joe Bloggs comes back and says, that's my house, what are you doing in there? Go away and you lose your money. It winds me up so much to hear things like that because it's just not true. But it just seems so easy for people just to come on and say things like that. And, and you know, no matter what I say to them, to say, come and join us on a Thursday and you will see how it works. It, it, it's almost like people are obsessed with writing this kind of thing. So if anybody wants to wind me up, and I know it's going to happen now, isn't it? No, I'm, I'm probably digging my own grave for this one. Don't pull my accent down. Uh, I'm a Yorkshireman, and I'm proud of that, even though I now live in Italy. Don't pull other little things sort of down. But worst of all, don't write rubbish like, like that kind of thing to say it's a nightmare. Because the vast majority of people that are, that are saying these things probably they, they will have never bought a house here and more than likely they'll just say oh well i know somebody that has that's usually a load of rubbish as well so you get all of these people that are just i call them armchair experts they sat there just thinking i just want to ruin somebody else's dream if you like and 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 things like that wind me up the other stuff doesn't wind me up so don't bother writing it what does right wind me up is that kind of thing so, uh, so if you want to wind David, I'm going to stop morning now, then write rubbish like that. Please don't. Uh, so I'm going to explain to you tonight. This is 
one of a few different webinars where we try and go through the whole process. So what this one is about is to try and show to you how normal, if you like, a system it is and how things are checked. So when people say, you know, this happened, that happened, uh, and I heard that, that Joe Bloggs came back and the rest of it, I heard that the house had to be pulled down. and all th These things can happen if you're not using the right people. In other words, you, you're bypassing the system. You, you, for some reason, you're listening to this person that's not an expert, they're not registered, they're not doing anything else, and then you sort of it gets to contract time. You say, no, I don't need that in my own language. I'll just send you the money and just to when people and people do this kind of thing. And, you, and I always think to myself, why? Why are you doing this when there's people around that are professionals that can help you? Maybe more, hopefully, uh, you'll come to us. But I want to show you how the system works. This is this is the kind of thing that we do when we start to collect documents. I always have a geometer by my side when when we do this. So if anybody says, says to me, no matter where they are in Italy. Let's say that somebody comes along and says, I want to buy this house, but I'm a little bit, I need my hand holding, if you like. Um, you know, the agents are great. They've been helping me a lot, but their English is not particularly good. Or maybe the agent's not been helpful at all. And you need somebody just to completely take over and just say, look, I, I, I can't handle this anymore. Sort it out for me. Uh, I want to show you the kind of things that we do and what, what professionals sh should do. Uh, when it comes to uh, searching the documents and making sure everything's all right on the property. And at the end of this, you will then hopefully think, well, actually, it does seem quite a good system. And that's because it is a good system. OK, so remember that. So we're going to start off. Um, if anybody's got any questions as we go along, please, please buy, uh, send, me, uh, send me some questions. Uh, Tony's just put one up now. I was just about to say, as long as it's relevant to tonight's subject. So let's see. I'd love to buy in Italy. Have a French residency, but not sure how it is easy it is to move there uh, before retirement. If you have French, it, it depends what national, nationality you are, because unfortunately, if you are British, uh, Patricia, if you're British and you've got, you managed to get your residency sorted in France before the dreaded B word, um, but then you want to move to Italy, you're not necessarily... Uh, it's, it's not necessarily something that you can do um, because as far as I'm aware, you can you can be resident in the country you, you, you were resident before the B word, Brexit, um, but then you can't move freely within Europe from there. But you, you do really need to double check that. Uh, David, how is it going? We want to buy a lock-up and go condominium or flat in a house in a small village in Italy. I'm in California. Can you assist? Of course I can. Send me uh, an email to info at homeinitaly.com and, uh, and I will happily help. Okay, so let's get uh, started on tonight's subject. So Tony's already sent two questions through there that are not relevant to tonight, so he's doing very well. He's definitely, definitely on the wine again. This, this is certain, uh, but no, th it's fine to answer questions. Next week, we will do the big, massive Q&A where you can ask whatever you like. Uh, but tonight, let's stick, with the, let's stick with the legal documents, and I'm going to go through this as if you're in Italy now. You're in Italy. Hopefully, you're coming around with me in beautiful Abruzzo, and all of a sudden, you find this house, and you say, Dave, that's the one for me. What happens next? That's what we're going to talk about now. Okay, so let's do a little bit of screen uh, sharing. This is where everything goes wrong. So there's mini me in the. In the I actually look better on a smaller screen, I think. Anyway, um, okay. So common problems found on documents. When I say common, the last one's probably not not as much. But let's let's think about some of these things that that people are really scared about, really worry, what really worries them. And these are the kind of people then that go on, uh, that, that read things that other people have put on, on the internet and, and believe everything that, that they're saying. So incorrect owners, usually deceased relations, unregistered buildings, incorrect floor plans, debts and mortgages. Now, when I say it like that, all of a sudden you think, yep, that's Italy. I can hear people saying it now. No, that is not Italy. That is not what it's like because you will find out all these problems as time goes along. So let's quickly look at this again. Incorrect owners. What do we mean by that? What could potentially that mean? So let, let me give you an example. This happens, this happens a lot, which is why I've written usually deceased relations. Now, if you really love a property, you start doing the searches and then all of a sudden you find out that um, the person on the documents is not the person uh, that presented the property to you, okay? So you think, okay, well, this may be a little bit of a problem. Now, it is quite a normal thing when, let's say, grandparents pass away, they give the children their properties. 
what should happen straight away or, or within a certain amount of time is what they call a successione, which means basically the property is handed down from passed away grandparent to to the the, the 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 children or whoever it is who's been left in the will. Now, what happens a lot of the time is people won't do that straight away. There's a number of reasons why people won't do that. And a lot of it is to do with, with money as well, because things like that, to do the successione and things like that, do it obviously costs money. They have they have to sort this out. So sometimes what happens is the documents, the house documents, can still be in the old the old grandparents' name. Um, and obviously then the people want to sell, and all of a sudden they've got a problem because the name of the grandparents, not, the, not their name. You can't just go to a notary and just say, they passed away, so I can I can sell it. I'm the I'm the people that's been left to in the will. Let's do this. It, it doesn't work like that. I say lots of these armchair experts think it does, but it doesn't. A notary would just laugh you out of the office. Okay, so we have a problem straight away. There, the documents are not right. It needs to be resolved. It's simple. It needs to be resolved. That's what it needs to what needs to happen. And this is all done at the expense of the people that own the property. So let's say you fall in love with the property. We collect the documents and we say, okay, you were shown this doc this house by Mario and his and, and his sister Maria. Um, but it turns out that Mario and Maria are not the owners, it's this person. So we ring Mario up and we say, okay, thanks. You know, these people have found the property, they love it, they want to buy it. But we've got a Giuseppe that's on here. Who's Giuseppe? So Mario and Maria say, Well, that's our father or our grandfather. Okay, so you've obviously not done the suggestion. You do realize that needs to be done. Yes, of course. They go to a geometer. But this is why I've always got a geometer at my side, because the geometer will look at the documents and say, well, the first thing is that's not being done. That's not being registered. And this is a common one to do the suggestion. The geometer then takes the details, such as the death certificate, things like that, a number of other things from the people whose property it now belongs to, um, register on the land register, or do what they've got, to, what, what should have been done sort of before, sort all that out and get that document put in the name of the people who, who the hairs, if you like, of, of, of uh, uh, I think that's the word, uh, um, of, of, the, of, of the will, if you like. Um, so it's, it's a simple step. It may sound obvious, but there's so many people say, when people say, oh, I heard it wasn't even their property, uh, but th th these people bought the house and, and in the end, it wasn't the owners, it wasn't the right owners, and they got, it, it just can't happen, because the notary, if we all turned up with the documents that are wrong, the notary would just say, well, hang on a minute, where's where's Giuseppe? Why have we only got Mario and Maria? Do you like these names? I, the good ones, aren't they? Um, why have we only got these? You know, it's not that the notary's going to say, oh, okay, let's, we'll, we'll let it go anyway. That. Oh, don't know what happened there. Things seem to, uh, hopefully I'm, I'm back and everybody uh, don't know if that, anyway, I seem to be back. So I'll carry on talking. If, if somebody can just write in the comments book that you can still see me, that would be great. Um, okay. So that, that's, that's one of the things that, that, that could go wrong, but it's a simple thing to sort out. Let's look at uh, another one of these unregistered buildings. Thank you, Nick, for saying it's all good. Thank you. Unregistered buildings. What does that mean? So unregistered buildings could be a number of things. Maybe there isn't a legal extension. Maybe what happened was in Italy before 1967, you could build anything you wanted and you didn't need to have planning permission. So you had a piece of land, you could build what, what you wanted. Um, so prior to 1967, obviously people built houses and all the rest of it. And then after 1967, anybody building extensions and doing anything else, they had to have planning permission. Okay, so planning permission had to be um, as we all know, it had to be done at local levels, sometimes with the, uh, uh, with the local commune uh, or, or, at, or at regional levels and things like that. But you had to have planning permission. So what has happened in the past is people have built certain things, but they've not changed the documents. So in other words, I don't know, maybe they've added a bathroom. Maybe, they've, maybe the, the documents don't quite fit what we're actually seeing. But things like that, again, can be sorted out. Not in every case, because sometimes people may have done a completely illegal extension from five years ago, six years ago, that the council would have never allowed. And unless they can prove they did that before 1967, 
then it may be that they can't get it registered. But the important thing is you will get to know about it because you're going to see some of the documents that we collect and it's impossible that you can't know about it. So it's not, it's not something that will be sprung up as a, as a, 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 as a surprise. So Lillian's saying, but if anyone is going through a lawyer, these issues shouldn't come up, right? It's, it, people, I'm not going to pull lawyers down. Lawyers have their own, they, they're the only ones that can give you legal advice. But at the end of the day, the lawyer, the geometer, you, me, anybody else looking at this situation has to first look at all the problems. Or it doesn't matter whether you've got, a lawyer can't sort those problems out. A lawyer goes to a geometer, which is why I love having a geometer at my side, because they're the ones that do this type of work. So it's not that the lawyer, to give you an example, we had a client that that somebody said, um, uh, I had a lawyer, they, they saved the day because it suddenly found out that you know the building wasn't registered and blah, but what would have actually happened is the geometer collects the document, says this is not right, says to the lawyer, if you decide to have a lawyer, um, this is not right, this needs registering, this, this, this needs happening. So then the lawyer says to you, okay, well, I found this out, this needs to be done, so I'm getting somebody to do it. The lawyer then rings the geometer back up and says, please get on with that, sort it out, and let me know once it's done, and then I can download the documents and everything's perfect. The person that's doing that is the geometer. So I'm not saying don't use a lawyer. If you want to use a lawyer, that is entirely your decision. You don't have to. They don't do conveyance in here. The notary is the person that does all that kind of thing. And the documents have to be right before you go to the notary, whether it's with a lawyer, whether it's with a geometer, whether it's with whoever it may be, everything's got to be right before you go to the notary. And the person that normally puts these problems right is a geometer. Okay, so let's just go again to... Uh, this so unregistered builds. I'm going to go through these into more detail as we go along. Incorrect floor plans. That's another one. Again, somebody may have added a bathroom inside the house that's not there. Um, and I'm going to tell you again as when when we show you these documents, the the documents need to represent how the house is. So if you have been into a house and there is a bathroom in a room and it's not showing on the floor plans, it needs to go on there. It needs to go on there at the expense of the owners. And it's not difficult to do. And again, people say, well, you know, th that might have been hidden from me. It's not going to be hidden from you because the floor plans will be given to you at the notary's office. You need to ask for them before as well. Not, not by law, you don't need to because the notary will give them to you. But surely to God, you want to, you know, say to somebody, are the documents right? Can I have a look? Is everything Because, But at the end of the day, when you get to the notary's office, they're presented to you. Sign these, the notary will say. Because you've got to tell the notary. The notary is not going to the house to have a look. The notary will say, this is what's come off the land registry. This is the official document of the house. This is what the house looks like. And he's asking you or she's asking you to sign that document and say that that's true. So if you know there's a bathroom in a room, and, and, but it's not on the documents, then you don't sign. It's as simple, simple as that. Uh, sorry, Tony, I, I missed a question then that was uh, that was on. Is it common to have accurate building plan, plans in Italy, accurate uh, reality versus as built? Yeah, of course it is. Yeah. Everything has to be perfect. How the house is, the, the plans and everything, else, unless it was prior to 1967 when you didn't need planning, then that's different because it, then it's just declared that the problem. So a lot of us looking at these historical townhouses and things like that, you know, declare that it was done before 1967, that's enough. But then if people start adding to that, because that does happen, again, some people, when they add to their properties and create extra rooms, they, they don't change the documents because they may have to pay more taxes on it. That's the reality. They may have to do it. So what happens is you come along, want to buy that property, you look at it and say, well, these floor plans are nothing like what they, you need to get this sorted out. The person then runs to a geometer and says, oh my God, I know I should have done this. I've not done it, need to get it right. The geometer will say one of two things, right, it's no problem, but you're gonna to have to pay fines and, and get it sorted. Uh, or I'm sorry, that, could, that would have never been allowed and, and you can't do it. They're the two simple answers. The wool can't be pulled over your eyes because you're signing, as I said, the floor plans. If, you, if you're prepared to sign for something that's not true, then no disrespect, but that's, that's your fault, not, not the Italian state fault, if you like. Uh, where could you vet a property to make sure he is the correct owner, to make sure you are not frauded? Again, you're not going to be frauded, Daniel. Because, um, is it Daniel, sorry, I can't see. Because you can't be frauded on this because you've got to go to the notary's office. So if I suddenly say I want to sell my next-door neighbor's house, let's say I suddenly think to you, come and have a look at this house, what do you think? 
It's as daft as saying that, that I say, okay, you've seen my next door neighbor's house. Do you like that? Yeah. Let's go to the notary and I'll sell it to you without anybody knowing. <laughs> it's, it's, as, it's as silly as saying that. It's just, it's just not correct. It's as, it's as simple as that. Okay, so let's move on to my last point, which was the debts and mortgages. Again, people worry about debts and mortgages, obviously, so you should. The, the example I'm going to show you tonight, this property had a huge debt on it. But again, you get to know about it. It can't be hidden. It's there in black and white. The notary will say there is a debt on this property. So we could check. Let's say, for instance, you love a property. You say, Dave, I want you to be with me all the way through it. Right, okay, me and, and my geometry, we, we get off with it. Uh, we, 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 we get on with the work and we say, right, okay, at this stage, there's no debts on the property. So you've got a sign in three months' time. Who knows what could happen in that three months? You know, so again, people might think, oh, you know, debts, uh, I never knew about it, all the rest of it. Of course you will. So yes, it's right that anything could happen within that three months. But the notary on the day will check that. They will make sure that because they're the ones that have to tell you. Now, it's happened to me once in in over 15 nearly 18 years i've been doing this now uh this happened to me once where we got a surprise at the notary's office and all of a sudden you think we've got a debt on the property and and you know we searched it so many months before and there was nothing live on the day there was a debt there and you think okay but again it can't go ahead it, it can go ahead if you accept the debt the important thing to remember is the notary will tell you nobody else the notary will tell you so it doesn't matter how many times I search, the geometry searches, uh, a solicitor searches, it's live on the day when it matters. And it's the notary when they say, done the searches, unfortunately, there's this on there. And it all comes out. So however you think somebody could be frauded, because that, that is what everybody thinks. Don't buy an Italy, it's a nightmare. It, it, it's wrong. You shouldn't think like that. All you need is the right people working for you, and it's simple. So let's move on. Let me just get this back up again. So let's move on to, you should hopefully see my little uh, red, whatever it is, little laser apparently. Um, so let's say you're with me now in Italy and you found yourself this, this beautiful property and you just think, um, you know, the, the perfect property, I want this property. Before we move on, I just want to say, somebody asked a question. So a buyer can legally accept the old debt or is it forbidden until settled? Of course you can. You can accept the old debt uh, with no problem at all. And that's what happened in this case. And I'm going to show you, and this is a, a true case. And this, this is what happened in this. Um, okay. So you've come to Italy. We've, we've, we've looked around some properties. You found this one. It's beautiful. You can see the house. You can see a garage here. You can see what looks like a garage at the back. Obviously, you would have, you would have seen it in person. Uh, moving on, here's a garage, here's another garage, outbuildings. So it's just, just what you're after, lots of outbuildings and all the rest of it. Uh, and then another outbuilding here. Okay, so now we know what the property looks like. Now we need to make sure that everything that's there should be there. So one of the first documents that we collect, oh, not this one because this is a Google Earth map. <laughs> Let me just, so this is the house. Here's the garages. Here's another garage. And the land roughly goes, follows the, the, the orange, orange line, uh, roughly as, as, as near as damage. So, so we know where we are with that. So then we collect a document. Hopefully it's on the next slide. Here it is. Now, it may look like a very basic document, but these documents come from, they are more detailed when we get them from the official uh, land registry office. And these little orange cloudy bits here are obviously because it's of it's somebody's property, so I can't give all the information out. You will find that on, on some of these documents I'm going to show you. There will be parts sort of uh, uh, fogged out, if you like. So the property that we're interested in is, is this part here, the purple part uh, and this green area. OK, now this is because this is one. This is obviously the main house. Uh, this is one of the garages. The land is also this area here and lots of these little strips here. Now, as you'll notice, every one of these has its own number. So we know there's something here at the minute. We don't know what that is. We know there's something here. We know there's a building there. We know there's a building here. We know that this is a road here. So everything's looking all right up to now. This is a blank area with nothing in it whatsoever. So straight away, we think, well, you know, what is that? Basically, that's a very simple thing. When you've got a group of, of in, like in this case, two or three garages all put together, there's too much information to go on to 
uh, such a small space. So they leave it blank and that would then open up into another map that will have information of this. So as you can see here, hopefully you can see this, this, this red thing going around, but that's the house. So that is this part here. This purple part here is this garage, even though at this stage we don't know if it's a house or a garage, we just know it's a building. This building at the bottom here is this one here. And then this space here is where we've got these two or three buildings all clumped together. So obviously then we'd collect another document to get that, uh, to, to get the information from there. This is the road. You can see here that this is the road. Now on here, you will notice that this garage being this one seems to be further into the land than before. This is normal because these roads were probably the roads that were done years ago as the roads widen and things like that, it will be slightly different to this. But at least it gives you an idea. You're thinking, okay, I've got all these plot numbers. So what do we do then? This plot number here with the house is 4070. So we collect another document. We collect it for every single plot of land and everything that we think that we're buying. Now, this document gives us a lot of information. Unfortunately, I have had to, to block out uh, some of the information. But here, usually you will have the name of the people that, uh, that own the property. And there will be here, in this case, there was two owners, uh, and it tells you how much of that property that, uh, that they own. Now, this, in this particular case, uh, they, they, this person owns the full property, but this second person has what they call uso fruto. Uso fruto, it's gonna be difficult for you to sort of remember all these things, but basically, sorry, I need to go back. Uso fruto is, um, is where, let's say, for instance, I wanted to um, pass this house, or we wanted to pass this house down to our children now. Let's say we wanted to do that, but we're going to live in it for until we die. You do what you call uso fruto, which basically means that myself and my wife, we can live here legally. We, we're responsible for bills. We can have a say in everything to do with the property, but we've given the ownership over to our children. When we pass away, Uso Fruto dies with us. So if I die first, uh, then my, my wife still has Uso Fruto. They can't sell it without a signature. They can't do anything without a signature. Um, and then when she passes away, the house then goes to, to the children. So that's what you may hear that a few times. And it's a simple thing. It's a, it's, a, it's a great system where you can pass it to your kids, but your kids basically can't throw you out if you have an argument. So, so you, you can, you've got as much right to them uh, to, to stay in that property. So that, that's, what, uh, that's what that is. Okay, so this document, as well as giving us the name of the owner, so straight away we can tell, in this particular case, the second owner was born in, in 19, I think it was 1905 or something like that, uh, and had uso fruto. Now, at this stage, obviously, the person is still on the documents. So we can't go to the notary and we can't just suddenly say, yeah, but, but notary, the, at the end of the day, you know, it was, it was uh, born in 1860. There's no ways of that. The notary's not interested in, in that. The person's still on the documents. So if they add uso fruto, we need to prove that that person's passed away. So again, the owner goes to the, the, the geometry because the notary won't let it pass. It can't get past the notary. So if you, if you get past, if you get to the stage where you go to the notary and somebody's managed to con you all the way along, it all comes out in the end. So then the notary would say, this person's still on. The geometer needs to register, uh, needs to, 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 to register the documents correctly to get the, the death certificate, put that into the, and say, can you please take this person off the documents because they're no longer alive. Doesn't matter if they were born in 1820. The notary's not going to say, okay, yeah, 200 years. It doesn't matter. It's got to be correct. The documents have got to be right. Okay, so inside of that, um, uh, inside of this document, as I say, we get lots of information. Uh, we also get uh, the famous rendita value, which is here, which gives us an idea of the, the taxable value of the house. But we're not going into that on this one. That We'll save that for another live session. So in here, we know that... Um, keeps jumping away from me now this 4070 up to now as an a3 an a category means that it's got something that's habitable so we still don't know what yet at this stage and then it's got a c2 in that that's a garage so up to now that matches perfectly what this is telling us what this document is telling us because it's saying here there's one building and here there's a second building it all comes under 4070 so at this stage 
everything is looking as it should do because we know 4070 here habitable property and the garage it's telling us how many rooms there is in there because that's what this means and on the garage it doesn't have to tell you how many rooms it tells you how many square meters it is so again these are all documents that we all use what do we do then we need to know more about what this property is is all about how it's made up so then quite simply we collect the floor plans for the property now you will have gone to the property it's usually a more a fuller document this because above here is all the information again with the plot numbers and everything else and the name of the owner so it is a lot more it's just obviously i've had to take that off uh, for, for privacy so here you get the the the, uh, the official floor plans now the notary will download these live on the day he will download these and or she will download them and say to you is this the property now if you know that in this room there's a bathroom for instance or this wall's been taken down and now this is all one room and maybe there's a there's a wall here now and things like that why would you sign because again it's laid out in front of you it's incorrect at some point somebody's got to make that correct so it needs to be done before you go to the notary because you would say well i'm not signing on here because that is not what the what the uh, what the property is like and again it's not down to the notary uh, to, to do that it's not down to the notary to say i'm going to go to that house and check it out for you they are downloading it giving it to you and saying is this right now if you declare that it's right and it's not and the owner is also saying is declaring that that's how it is we're talking serious serious problems for, for both of you here because you, you, you're falsely declaring in front of a notary so all this thing about oh i had the wool pulled over my they didn't how how is that possible you've already seen the document where the owners it clearly says who the owner's there and if the owner is not there in front of the notary if that person whose name on that document is not there then they can't sign they can't sell it simple as that so how how do these people come up with the with the thing of well i bought a property and found out later it didn't belong to me how how is that possible somebody says oh there was an extension and then i found out later it was illegal well you should have looked at the floor plans you've got to sign those floor plans so how again how is it possible that's why when people write things like that it annoys me so much because it makes it out as if the system is useless <laughs> and it's not it's, it's a perfectly good system and probably matches a similar one to, to where you are uh daniel saying dave what i meant uh, we are abroad and we looked on facebook and wanted to make sure that, that the owner is the correct one where do we go online to make sure of the owner you can't you can't really do that that's something that you would have to you would have to go into the uh you'd have to have all the information of the owner including their tax codes and all things like that um all details of the council and all the rest of it you would have to try and get onto the um the, the land registry uh, and make sure but to be honest with you if you're going to do that with every property it, it would be an absolute nightmare at the end of the day you know it, the vast majority of people that advertise properties are not going to waste their time advertising if if the if the if the documents are all wrong you know so it, it, it's just because it's just a pointless thing because nothing can happen but for you to sit there and, and look at a, and check every single listing is just a waste of time and not only that let's say you let's say you did want to do that let's say you fell in love with the house and you think that's the one for me okay and you checked it and you thought well mario's selling it but giuseppe's name on here and you straight away would say okay forget that rather than understanding that mario's the owner because giuseppe died and poor old giuseppe uh died but nobody's ever done the the, the suggestion it's, it, it's more it, these are problems that can be sorted out in some instances you can't sort things out but that i've never come across one that, that's in another owner's name as in like me selling my next door neighbor's house and then my next door neighbor later saying well, what on earth are you trying to sell my house i've never nothing ever happened like that so usually what happens as i say it's in, in somebody's name that's passed away and they've just not changed the documents because it costs money so it's really a pointless exercise doing that you just need to trust in the system but before you get to a stage where you start buying you should have a clear picture of who owns it uh, and that's where I love to use the geometers and then I can say, look, I've given this to my geometer. He's checked everything. Everything's fine. This needs to be changed. That needs to be changed, which no problem. We're on to it. That's what happens. I'm doing one now for a couple uh, that came on a tour that, that hopefully they're going to come on here as well. They're buying blind. They, they, they've not seen the property. And exactly the same happened where we need to change. The, 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 the family need to do a, a successione to put it into their name because just before we did the signing, one of the family members passed away. 
but it's all things that can be done with no problem. Um, are most of these documents publicly available in Italy? No, these these are these are all from the the uh, the, the land registry and that kind of thing. So they are public. You, you can have access to them. There is a way I understand that you can pay certain things to go onto the land registry and do them, but you're just better off waiting. You know, don't don't think that every property is dodgy. <laughs> you shouldn't think like that. You should think that every property can be sorted, and the vast majority can. Very very few can't be. So you don't have to worry about that at this stage but once you start getting interested in that interested in a property that's when the professionals come into it and also registered estate agents they will have the details but for me a geometry is, a, is the right person is the right way to go I, I i won't work without one because i just think that they're, they're, they're great they can help you with restorations they can advise you with things like that as well of all, uh, of all the other things but we'll we'll leave that for another stream let me carry on with the Carry on with what, uh, what we're talking about. So the floor plans, these are going to be presented to you at the notary's office. Make sure they're right. If they're not right, you just say, I'm not signing until they're, they're right. Simple as that. By law, they have to be right. Even if you're in a contract, you've signed a contract, the, 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 the paperwork's not right yet. It's in there that the paperwork has to be right before the signing of the contract. Otherwise, the owners have to pay you double back. It's, it, it's so simple. It's just that. That's just the way it is. So up to now, we now know that we've got uh, the house looks perfect. Everything's as we as we thought it was. Now this is at the level of uh, what we call a, a fiscale level. So in other words, the floor plans are right, everything's right. The, the, they're paying the correct taxes, the, whatever taxes they're paying on the house and the rest of it. But we still don't know if that property has had any work done um, since 1967. Now in this case, it had. It had had work done, so we need to see the planning. So it's not just like, you don't just say to the owners, did you get planning? Yes, we did. Oh, okay, well, that's fine. <laughs> it doesn't work like that. Um, sorry, just Patricia, as an agent, you would do all this for the potential buyer. That, that's not, it's not for an agent to, it's, it's for an agent to have a, a view, an overview of the documents at that, at that point and to say, this needs to happen. Uh, so yes, they they will do, but they the, the agent won't change the documents. That's not what happens. The owners change the documents with the geometers and that kind of thing. But as soon as you're interested in a property, then your agent or whoever it is that's showing you properties will then have to look at the documents, collect the documents. As I said, if you were coming to look uh, around with me at properties that I don't know are advertised on our property portal, um, and you love a property and you want to buy the property from that owner. Um, at that stage then is when we bring the geometry in and say, okay, let's check the, the information of, of this property. But it's not for the agent to sort the problems out. It, everything comes out, but it needs to be sorted out by the professionals. Uh, how long is it likely to sort out defective title uh, or would you walk away? I definitely wouldn't walk away because the vast majority will have something wrong with the title, the vast majority. So I, I definitely wouldn't walk away because the vast majority of problems can be sorted out in, in sometimes days, sometimes weeks, very rarely months and months and months. So the vast majority of the vast majority of properties will have some sort of problem. If you're going to walk away, you're going to walk away from a lot of properties. But just trust in the system to get it done quick and get a good geometer. That, that that's the key. Get somebody that's working on your side. That's why I'm here. <laughs> anyway, let's go. Let's move on. Um, he says, "How do we move on?" My screen seems to be blocked now. Just one second. Uh, I can't show you this now. Here we go. Okay, so we've gone past the floor plans. We know that everything is fine with the floor plans. We then, we, all, we also know the property was built before 1967, but it's had restorations done since then. So this is, I, I had to find this off the internet, but this is, what we do is we, we go to the local council and we ask for access to the, to the acts. Um, and, and what this is, once you've gone to the, 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 the local council, you pay an amount and... Uh, it will come up from the council all the work that's been done to that property and whether it was done, as you can see in this case, with floor plans and all the rest of it. So everything will come up. Now, if it's a property that was done uh, before 1967, as I say, you don't need any, anything like this. It's just declared that it was done before 1967. Uh, and, and, and that's it. That's all, all they need to declare. But if it clearly hasn't and it's, and it's had updates or it was built after 1967, then it has to have planning. Now, usually what happens is that people will give you all the planning. If you've got all the planning in front of you, the geometer looks through all of that, looks at all the protocol numbers, make sure it was done with the council and all the rest of it, everything perfect. How the house is is how it's been done. It's been registered correctly. 
all the documents are perfect let's go let's do the let's do the act now if the person says i don't know where the planning documents are i know that i know my granddad did this but we don't that's when you go to the council and you get access to the acts and that means then everything to do with that property where somebody has gone to ask for permission to do something will be registered at the council and they will give you sometimes it can be a pile like this of, of documents give it to you and say here's everything here's all the permission so let's say then you say okay i've gone through all of this they've done everything here but look they've not added the swimming pool for instance but it needs to be done it's there in front of you it's not there it's not on the documents it's not on the floor plans it's nowhere to be seen it needs to be done and, uh, and again I, c I can't stress it enough just to say to you it's put in front of you so unless you're not blind to it but unless you decide not to look because you just think you know what I'm, I'm too busy whatever just just whatever i really love that house i want to buy it that's where mistakes come that's where errors come not the system because if somebody said oh well they've accepted that, that there's no swimming pool there the notary's not going to check or well, they've accepted that that extension is not there. They've signed the documents, they've signed the floor plans, and then complain about it later. How can you do that? Because what happens then is that extension, you've declared that it wasn't there. You said to the notary, it wasn't there. Two weeks later, the council may come along and say, who put this extension up? You say, oh, no, I bought it like that. No, you didn't. It's signed here that you didn't, that you declared it wasn't there. It's all simple things. You know, hopefully a lot of you are saying, oh, yeah, it is, because it is simple. You wouldn't do it. You wouldn't do it in the country where you are now. So don't do it here. Simple as that. Uh, we emailed an agent about a home, and they, uh, they had advertised. Uh, when they told us the roof terrace in the photo is unregistered, is that something the owner would have to fix? Uh, why advertise with a known issue? Because, I mean, first of all, yes, they, 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 they would. In, in, you'd have to see the documents of the house, because if it was just the roof or if it was... A roof terrace, uh, for instance, this property when we bought before we before we changed it had a flat roof. So yes, you could argue that it was a terrace, but it wasn't really a terrace. It was a flat roof, but it could be used as a terrace later. So yeah, you, you do need to. I'd, I'd have to look at the documents just to see uh, what it is. As far as why would they advertise it? Because if these are pro if they've looked at it and and know that these are problems that can be sorted out with the council later, then that's the key thing it can be advertised as seen once you check the documents and go into it if there's any problem but this is the same in any country how do you know a hundred percent that the house that you bought is registered correctly do you, do you know does everybody know a hundred percent that when it comes to sell because there's so many times where you hear people say the solicitor found this out i never knew that and that's the key thing so you're saying no this is mine this everything's correct here it is but somebody may find something the, the important thing is that it's sold. But again, any property you can go in, whichever country you're in now, you can ring an estate agent up tomorrow and say, I want to sell this property. And all the, the estate agent is not going to look into every last final. Day. They only do that once it gets to, depending where you are in the world, whether it gets to a notary or whether it gets to whatever stage that is. It's not that the estate agents sit there and do a full survey of the property, a full... They don't do that. As far as I'm aware, they don't do that anywhere in the world, but they certainly don't do that in, in the UK. Um, so they can advertise it. you know. But then if there's problems later that can't be resolved, unfortunately, then it can't be resolved. But the vast majority of times, people will say, estate agents will say, can I look at the, uh, can I look at the documents, make sure everything's right? And it all looks right up to now. If there's anything found later, then as I say, 90, I'm going to say 90% of the time it can be sorted. It may even be higher than that. Um, as I say, touch wood. I've never, I've, I've had, I don't think I've had one that, that couldn't, no, maybe I have one or two in all these times that just could not be sorted out. Uh, so, so you don't need to worry so much on that side. Okay, so let's move on. So we're now, we now know that all the documents are correct. Everything, uh, we, we've gone through all the, um, uh, all the, 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 the floor plans. We know that's right. The maps look right. The planning permission was done. What about debts and things like that? Now, in this case, we looked on here. I don't know why this document takes so long to, to load up. Unfortunately, it's blank because I had to get rid of all of this information. This comes from the, uh, again, from the, uh, uh, from the land registry. And it's basically an inspection of, of any debts. Now, usually these documents will come back blank and the notary will say to you, everything's fine, I've already checked that. In this particular case, it wasn't blank, it was full. Of, of, of problems and there was a large debt uh, on, on, on this property 
uh, but it gives you the information of, of where, where that debt is um, and who it's with, should I say, uh, and also the amount and all that kind of thing. Now, obviously, I'm not going to share that kind of information on here, unfortunately, but that came back and it did show that there was a debt on the property. So everything else was fine, but there was a debt. So the important thing is we know about it. OK, so we know that there's a debt on the property. We see who the debt was with. In that case, it was with a bank. You go to the owners and say, OK, we found this. Sometimes it can be a genuine thing. Sometimes somebody could have had a mortgage and at the very end, they didn't register that the mortgage was paid off. Uh, I don't know if you, you've noticed, but in a lot of countries, when you pay your final mortgage payment is always usually a bit more than all the others because that takes it, it, it gets registered that it's paid and there's a few other things that's paid on there and it shows then that it's free of that. Now, in Italy, like a lot of things, there's a lot of things that you have to do for yourself. Um, and whether it's still like that uh, now, I'm not sure, but in the past, it used to be that you would then go and pay a certain amount and register then that that was clear. And some people didn't do that. We had one that was like that, and it was something like 90 odd euros that they had to pay, uh, which they did. We had to postpone the act because we couldn't we couldn't sell it because it had a uh, showing that it had a mortgage and a debt on it. The guy said, no, I paid it off. It's done. They did all the registrations that they needed to do. We, we got the, the, the official documents from the land registry again, and all, all the debts were cleared, and it was all gone. Now, in this case, it couldn't happen like that. So the owner said, okay, well, I can't pay this debt off until I sell the house. So we're in a bit of a catch-22 catch situation. So basically, the, the, the notary guaranteed what that debt was. So we said to the notary, can you write down, can you tell us how much that debt is? And the notary said, here's the document. Here's how much it is this is how much is is uh, is owed now if it was a mortgage the mortgage company would come along to the signing they would get part payment and the owner would get part payment and everything's closed off so if, if it's got a mortgage on the property the, the 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 company will come in this case it was a debt that was put onto the property um and and on some of the land as well so i don't know what happened but they they, they basically put debt on onto the uh, uh onto the property so if they tried to sell they had to get that money back so what happened then was is the notary said to us the debt is x the debt is x amount and this is who it's in favor to so two choices the owner either pays that money and comes back and then it's all good or in this case let's say the property was 150k whatever it was let's say with 150k let's say the debt's 50 basically what happened is we were guaranteed that the debt is 50 so the the buyer decided to give the seller 100k and then with the 50k the following day they went down to the bank and they paid it off that was it because it was then their debt obviously they they bought the house they had a document to say we've now bought this house we understand there's a 50k debt the important thing was the important two things was first of all you knew about it it's impossible you don't know the only way that you could not know is if all the documents were in italian you gave somebody power of attorney to sign. You're sat there at the side. You gave somebody power of attorney to sign. You weren't interested in, in having it translated in any way. Then, yeah, somebody could do something like that. It's a huge risk for the person doing the power of attorney because they they've failed really in their duty. But that's the. But why would why would you do that? Why why would anybody do that? So again, it's 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 laid out in front of you. The notary is saying you can still have this property but it's got this debt on it. If you're happy to take that debt, then this is how much it is. This is the guarantee that this debt is this much up until this date. So you have until that date to pay it off. And that's what happened. They paid it off. And then the documents got put into the new owner's name, debt gone. And that's that's exactly how it happened. Uh, Carol saying the home buying system in Italy makes far more sense and much safer than here in Canada. I mean, I, I don't know for, for in Canada or, or, or other countries. I mean, obviously, I'm from the UK and I know that solicitors tend to do all of this together. I actually like being part of it. I, I actually like being, you know, in the middle because you know everything that's happening. But the important thing is, is you know everything that's happening. It's not hidden away in some dark cupboard that comes out later and bites you. It, it just, just doesn't work. It doesn't work like that. Um, We've got a question. Before you put a deposit on the property, do you as an agent supply an estimate on the cost of, of getting all the documents? Okay, the important thing is any problems with documents, it's not for you to sort out. It's for the owners to sort out. 
unless the owner says, look, okay, you've really battered me with offers. Um, if you want this sorted out, which of course you will, if you want this problem with the document sorted out, you're going to have to pay for that. Now that can happen as well. And that can be put in the agreement. But this again is where the, the for me, a geometer by my side is perfect. You come to me, you love this property. You want to buy it. it doesn't matter where it is in Italy. Then will you have a look? Will you, I give it straight to the geometer. Give me a report on that. Tell me if that's, if everything looks correct, here's the people that sell in it, check that they're their owners, check what's, and then they will come back to me and say, no, Dave, this is not being registered. And that's not being registered. And that extension is not being registered. If this was me, the owner, the, the geometer would say, if this was me and you were coming to me with this problem, then yes, I can sort it out. It will take this long and it will cost this much. And then usually what happens then is I would go back to the, the owners and say, look, this person wants to buy your house. There's all these problems you obviously need to sort it and the vast majority of time people know that there's these problems and they say yeah yeah don't worry it will be sorted and i know again i can hear some of you now yeah yeah of course it will it has to because it doesn't get past the notary simple as that doesn't matter you can employ 10 lawyers you can employ 20 geometers you can employ 50 lots of me whatever it's the notary at the end it won't get past doesn't matter what anybody else says to you so that is a bit of a rundown on how the documents work. And, and as I say, it needs, it's something that I just don't want you guys thinking that the system here is a Mickey Mouse system that just, just doesn't work. And it's, it's, it, it's flawed with so many thoughts because it is not at all. It's just so simple for these armchair experts to start writing things on Facebook or on YouTube because they're bitter in life and they don't want you to have your bit of fun. They don't want you to have your bit of, of Italy and they just got the hump with somebody. And so they write things like this. Forget about that. Tune into us every Thursday and find the truth. Cause that's, that's what I want to get out. I sound like I'm preaching to you now, but, but it, that's what I want to do to get across to people to say, don't be scared about these little things because it's not, it's not, it's not something that uh, you, you should be scared of. Okay, I'm going to answer this question, even though Tony is definitely drinking tonight, definitely, because he keeps putting these questions through, even though it's nothing to do with tonight's subject. I will answer this one, but save all the others for, for next week. What is the sales commission for the agents in Italy? It's usually, I'm not an agent. I'm registered as a consultant. I do things a completely different way. Contact me on info at hominity.com and I'll send you a service sheet of how we, we work. But agents, uh, at the moment, some prices are going up. But round about 3%, uh, 3% with a minimum usually of 3,000 euros plus VAT, which VAT is currently 22%. And that's taken from the owner and uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the buyer. Um, it's, it's putting more questions through again, Tom. So there isn't, oh no, this one is relevant to tonight. Uh, so there isn't a title insurance in Italy. No, you have to trust that either you or professionals catch everything. It, it, again, the, it's laid out in front of you. I understand what you're saying. I do understand what you're saying, Russ, but it's not, it's not like that. It, everything comes out in the wash. They, and, and I understand in the US they have these different insurances and that kind of thing, but it's so simple. It's all at the, you download it from the, from the land registry. Is this my house? Is this, uh, has it been legally built? Is there, and there's these sort of four, five, six bits of criteria. Put all that together and that's it. You don't have to worry about anything else. It really is as, as I'm not going to say simple. It's not simple, but that's how it works. Okay. Right then, guys, I'm putting the, the outtake music. People saying thank you for the valuable information. You are more than welcome. Please, please. I wish I knew how many people was in tonight uh, because we're streaming also on our other Facebook uh, group, which is uh, uh, Italy Property Under 50K. Um, we, we've recently... Uh, taken over on that so anybody watching from that facebook group hello and and, and welcome so uh, hopefully there's a great number watching i'm so annoyed i wanted to see tonight how many people were in but uh, you've been absolutely brilliant as, as as usual for asking the questions remember next week is the big massive q a where you can ask whatever you like uh, and just make sure you join us uh, join us every week and if you're interested in that tour uh, in abruzzo on the 4th and 5th of may then, uh, then, yeah, get in touch. Info at home in Italy, and uh, hopefully we'll see you again. Okay, guys, thank you so, so much for joining us. We'll see you again next Thursday. This video will stay on YouTube and Facebook for you to view later if you've come in late or if you've 
gone off or whatever. Uh, so please enjoy. Thanks. Uh, thank you so much. Thanks for your support. See you soon.